Hi there, Joe the CRM chap here with a brand new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam MB400. This is the developer's exam for those working with the Power Platform or Dynamics 365 online and uh, customer engagement. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a Canvas Power Apps. In the previous video in the series we saw a different type of Power Apps, a model driven app. They're best suited for scenarios where you're working directly with the common data service CDS database and you just focus on building very sort of data driven applications. In comparison, Canvas apps are more for the situations where um, you need to develop an app that's going to be surfaced as part of, let's say, a mobile application, a mobile or tablet device. Or if you want to have very sort of fine control over not just the look and feel of how of your of your application, but also on which data sources it connects to. So the great thing about a Canvas app is it doesn't really care where your data source sits. It could be in CDS, it could be in SharePoint, in a SQL Server database. It could even be in something like Share, um, Salesforce, for example. It doesn't really care. It, you know, it, all, it, all it does is it, all it really cares about is it will bring the data in, it will handle all that for you, and then you just tell it in terms of, okay, what do I need to do in terms of updating or creating or adding new records on as, as and when you work with the app. So that's one of the major benefits that you have when working with Canvas apps you know, in comparison to model-driven apps. So in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to create a Canvas app from scratch. As part of that, we'll discuss at a very high level some of the features you've got as part of that, and we'll see just how easy it is to get to grips with Power Apps with you know with very little sort of effort involved, which is always quite nice. So as you can see on here, I'm in my existing solution that we've been working through as part of the previous videos. Typically, what you would do within here when you're creating a new Canvas app, you go to New up here, App Canvas App, then you select one of the form factor options on here to create your app. The purpose of today's video, because we're going to be creating, doing a sort of a pre-built app from scratch um, situation, instead what we need to do is go to Apps up here, go to New App and then Canvas instead. This is then going to open up the Power Apps um, sort of designing studio environment. And then through here we've got a few um, different settings that we need to sort of um, digest first of all. Um, we can see on here that we've got the option of being able to um, create an app based off an existing data source and we've got a few different options on here mostly Microsoft focus we can click on here and view the whole different list of connectors if we wanted to um, we'll go back to this in a few minutes we also got the ability of being able to create an app from scratch so a completely blank app that you can then just go on and just tailor to your heart's content or finally you've got the ability of being able to select some pre-designed apps that have been supplied and sort of curated by Microsoft which sort of address sort of common business sort of scenario so you know it could be for example let's say okay I've, I want to build an asset management application oh brilliant okay great in here we've got an asset checkout app I can just select this application on here maybe tinker about it a little bit change some of the branding on it and then boom straight away I've got a working application ready to go to basically address my need which is really great so this is always worth a, a little look when you maybe you first get into grips with power apps to see okay is there something here already that I can maybe just sort of sneakily steal customize away and then start working on myself. It's always good to not necessarily reinvent the wheel if you get the chance. So as we can see on here, um, we mentioned you know, you've got the ability to connect to various data sources. So what we're going to do today is we're going to select the common data service um, as our existing data source. I'm going to select the phone layout as part of that. So in most cases, you want to go for the phone layout if you are intended for the app to be worked with primarily on the phone. If instead you're wanting to create an app that's going to be worked either on the tablet or on the desktop, um, then select the appropriate option for that instead. It, it basically just affects the orientation of the application ultimately. That's what it does. So obviously having a condensed view can be a bit more limiting on a desktop or a tablet device. Just keep that in mind when you're first determining which app to go for. So we'll click on phone layout up here and it's going to load up all our entities from the CDS and in this case we're just going to select the account entity up there and click connect. So what it's doing at this point is it's going off and it's querying our entity, the data in there, determining which fields it needs to bring across the sort of the important fields, and then building out a ready-to-go application that we can start using. Um, and you know that's done that in literally just a few seconds almost. And straight away we've got a fully working application with three different screens: a browse, detail, and edit screen down here that we can sort of see. It's even brought in some of the some existing data in the CDS straight in as well, and straight away if I wanted to I can click the play button at the top up here and I can start actually working with this app I can say okay I want to create a brand new record uh, we'll call this let's say 256 uh, test street and uh, we'll call this let's say uh, wingtip toys and then we'll give it a phone number as well 
click the tip button up there and then straight away the record's been added onto there and I can interrogate it further if I want to or even delete it if I so choose. So this is one of the main benefits that you've got when working with Canvas apps, the ability of being able to test your changes very quickly without needing to push and deploy things out first. You can just make a quick change in the main interface down there and then very quickly you can see how that sort of looks on there if, you know, as part of when your you actual user uses it. So what we're going to look at now is we're just going to take a look today just broadly at the various different components that you can do on here and then we'll see how we can then push this ready to go app out into um, you know, ready for users to use. There'll be an accompanying blog post for this video that goes into a bit more detail around things such as expressions and the various different features that we'll see on here. But I don't want to get too bogged down in the detail today. It's more about just giving you an overview, or a broad overview of the capabilities that you've got of in here. So the tree view on here, it shows us essentially just a structure of our application down here. We can see the various different components so on the browse screen. We can see we've got a gallery on there. The gallery is a special component type that returns details from our data source so we can see down here it's returning um, you know three different data field properties from our particular data source on here there's also various different type other types of components such as icons and labels and things like that and we can very quickly add new screens onto our app at any point by clicking the appropriate button up here we've got a few different sort of template screens that we can sort of select at any given point so for example if maybe if I wanted to do an email composition screen for example I can click on that it's going to add that screen on with all of the sort of the components built in and ready to go. So again, there's a lot of helpful tools within this to help you along with your development so you're not necessarily having to do lots of things. And then boom, we've, we've got a um, we've got the ability to basically send out an email from the app if we so choose, and all the components that we need for that are ready to go in there. I'm just going to delete that from that. Delete that from now. When we click on any particular component, we can see that all of the various different properties are sort of shown up in this little tab on here. So we can adjust various different things, such as let's say the color. So maybe if we want to change this to let's say a red color, uh, ooh, looks a bit horrible. Okay, maybe change that back down there. All the various different properties are shown down here. On the advanced tab, typically what you have on here, okay, so when there's certain event driven type things that I want to do, so for example on select, um, okay, I want to have a specific event that sort of triggers based on that. Um, this is one way in which you can view it up here. Alternatively, you've got the expression bar at the top up here, and this will basically, under this drop-down list on here, it will show you all of the various different properties that you can um, you can customize and that you can have expressions for. So, if I was to select the, uh, the go to the on select property down here, we can see I've got an expression on here, the navigate expression, and what this is going to do is when I select the particular gallery item on there, it's going to navigate me to the detail screen one down there. And it's going to use a transition, well, it's going to use no transition as part of that. But if I wanted to, I could maybe change the transition type. So let's say, you know, I want to have a cover transition instead, maybe a cover right one. Hit return on there. As we saw, saw previously, I can just then quickly go on there and test that change. And then, yeah, we can see we've got a slightly different animation there for when we um, change our screens. Main benefit in terms of the um, what you can add to a power is the various different components so by going to the insert tab on here you can see you've got things ranging from your common things like labels and buttons you can add on gallery controls to show multiple items forms you can embed in a form and add on existing fields to a data source and then you've got some additional functions and commands that can help you in terms of submitting the data back to your data source as part of that which is really good got the ability to be able to add various different media controls um, and also do quite some nice quite things as well quite nice things such as um, barcode scanning so you can basically scan take a, um, a photo when using the application if it's a barcode it will scan it and then the underlying value of that barcode will then be sort of saved to a field of your choosing so that's quite nice and then finally you've got things such as being able to add on charts you can even include power bi tiles as well lots of various different icons that you can use you know covering pretty much all different types of scenarios which is really quite nice and then finally you can start to bring in some of the ai builder functionality as well as part of this which is which uh, is probably a whole video in of itself uh, but if you want to do things such as being able to you know recognize objects based on pictures that are supplied being able to process data from forms uh, you know using artificial intelligence and this is probably what you need to look at down here as we make changes to the application, we can sort of undo and redo our various actions up there. So we can very quickly get back to you know how an app looked at a particular stage. 
at the moment in terms of data sources that we've got hooked up to the app we can see we've got a few different ones on here um, so we've got the accounts on here it's also picked up my office 365 connection as well and we can see that the list of entities for the common data service database is sort of down here if we wanted to we can add any of those in very quickly so you know we could have a multi-entity app um, you know that does all sorts of good things as well um, and then also additional connectors that are listed down here as well which is quite good so at this point okay if we we're happy with our app at this point you know it's got everything we needed to do you know, in terms of it being a working app what we want to do at this point is we want to save the app first of all so we're going to go to file at the top on here we're just going to do save we'll just call this uh, mb400 in which case make sure there's a capital b on there save that down there So now it's been saved and when we go back to our Power Apps Center up here, if we were to give this a quick refresh, we can see, yeah, MB400 is basically there and ready to go, but it's not been published out yet. Um, and users won't even be able to sort of see it just yet. So first of all, we need to make sure it's been shared. First of all, when we share it out, people will then be able to use the application. We can see in the directory on here, um, at the moment, I'm the only person who can use this application. We just to add additional people on, we just basically type in the name and email address. We can then send out an email invitation when it then receives that, um, they can then go back into the Power App Center and then just click on the app in question and then it's going to load up the application in sort of the player mode within the web, within the sort of um, the online um, Power Apps uh, web app. And this will basically work as we saw you know, a few minutes ago. We can just go on there, maybe I just want to modify this ever so slightly. I'm just going to call this um, you know, Test Avenue instead, let's say. Press Save. And straight away those changes have been applied on there. And then finally, if I wanted to bundle this app up into my um, into my solution, because maybe I want to move it out into different environments, into UAT test or production, let's say, I can go into MB400 up here, go to add existing app, Canvas app, and we can see we've got our MB400 app on there. Click on add. Um, at the moment, it's been locked because I'm still in it at the moment. So if I was to um, close all this out at the moment and try that again, should be able to add it in. There we go. And so our app is there and it's basically it's ready to go. And from there, if we wanted to then go back in and edit it, we can do. We again use the Power App sort of designer studio to handle all of that for us. Just get it all loading up first of all. So as we were, if we were to make any sort of changes, those can be deployed out very quickly. If we so choose, let's say maybe we want to change the background color on this. Maybe change it to a sort of uh, maybe a greyish sort of colour, let's say. Uh, I'll do the gallery background colour instead. If I was to do to fill on here, uh, uh, let's just change it over here instead because it's a bit easier to do it this way. Change it like so. At this point, I can sort of add a note in terms of the version numbers, in terms of okay, what I've made as part of this particular change. That's completely optional save that and then at this point I then have to specifically publish out any new changes that I do to the app at the moment otherwise people will still have the old version of the app they won't be able to see the changes Now, the good thing about this is that you've got some very powerful and capable version tracking features on here so you can very easily and quickly restore back to previous versions let's say you push out you know a bad update one that's you know maybe broken a few things you can very quickly roll those changes back if you so need to and have a very full history in terms of, of the different changes that you've got on there so if I just click on publish on here and then straight away when we then go back onto our um, onto our app on here and click on play we should be able to see our change uh, might need to just do refresh a few times yeah you can see our change has been applied straight away So Power Apps, Canvas Apps is, you know, it's a very huge topic. It's, you know, for the purposes of just this particular exam, it's not something that you have to worry about in very sort of specific detail. What I would say is, though, is that being aware in terms of what the particular uses cases are for Canvas Apps, which we talked about at the start of the video, and also I think having a good awareness in terms of what the various different things that you can do from an expression, from a function point of view, will also be incredibly important. So, so basically, 
being able to use different functions on here, using the various different um, type of functions on here, having a bit of an awareness of that will hold you in good stead. But really just focus your attention more towards what the differences are between the two different power apps. And I think that's probably um, that's probably all you're going to need, particularly for the exam. So I hope this is, video has been really useful in sort of introducing you to Canvas apps. Um, leave, a, leave a comment below if you've got any questions at all, if there's any sort of ideas or suggestions that you've got in relation to this series. I'd be more than happy to hear from you. Um, I'll be back soon, hopefully, with another video on another subject about this exam. Until then, take care and see you later.